is April 20th, 2021. The Board of County Commissioners meeting will convene. It's 9.30. If we could have the invocation by Rabbi Mark Sack. This is uh, my second participation in a public meeting in the last 15 months. Uh, last week I was at a meeting, uh, a, a uh, farewell event for my friend, Pastor Tom Schaefer at Cypress Lake Methodist Church. Um, I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. About six weeks ago, you don't need to bow your head yet. About six weeks ago, Lee County offered my synagogue the opportunity to be a vaccination site. Uh, we sent out word to our congregation and to another, and we get about 60 or 70 takers. Registration was a little slow. And so I started knocking on the doors of my development and got, and sent, got an e-blast sent out to the whole community, and people came out in droves. People who had never been in a synagogue before showed up. Lee County offered us 250, 200, 200 shots in the beginning. In the end, we gave out 258 shots in four hours. Wow. Lee County gave us an opportunity to serve the greater community. And for that, my congregation is very grateful. The marquee outside my synagogue says we stand together. And I hope that this difficult time will leave all of us with a sense of our common humanity and that we are much stronger together than we are divided. I am grateful for the good work all of you do and I pray that in your work, you will find ways for all of us to serve the community, ways that remind us that we build a stronger, healthier and more vibrant Fort Myers when we stand and work together. I pray that you in your deliberations find the strength to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Thank you for inviting me in. It's good to be back. Turn to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Next on the agenda, we have some ceremony presentations. Commissioner Pendergrass. Thank you, Chairman. If I could have the great employees from the Animal Services come forward, please. And we have a special guest this morning. Callie's here. And she is all full of energy this morning. <laughs> you know, Very mellow. She got, there you go, Roger. It always goes straight to the chief. So uh, thanks for coming down and bringing Callie down here. I hope we can find a home for her. And if there's any, I know you got a lot of things going on this month at Animal Services. Anything special you want to talk about this morning? We do. It is uh, Animal Cruelty Awareness Month. So, we're, of course, we're always aware of that every uh, month at our place. So we want to make everybody aware of that. It is a national month by the ASPCA. Um, next month, we want to make everybody aware it is Ship Your Pet Month. So keep an eye on our Facebook and website. For that, we're going to have an event on May 19th. We have Callie here. She's an 11-year-old pug. She's Puggle, so she's part pug, part beagle. She's available for adoption. She's 11 years old. We have we're full right now, so if anybody's looking to adopt, come out and see us. Um, we have 17 available right now, and more moving to the floor. And it is kitten season, so keep your eye out. Any day now, we're going to be full of cats and kittens. So, anytime you want to adopt, you know where to go. <laughs> Can you see her at home right now? Yes. Laying on the floor, and Pablo is rubbing her belly right now. <laughs> <laughs> Loves her belly and her back to be straight. Right on cue. <laughs> She'll make somebody a great house dog, though. Yes, she will. So thank you for coming down, and thank you for bringing Callie down. Hopefully, Callie, we will find a great family to take her, take her in. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. My pleasure. And the next presentation will be by myself. It's with the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Committee. Members for the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee, anybody here? I know Pat Connors here, and who else we have? Come on up. Don and Eric.
we'll do is I'll read the resolution and then take a photo. Okay. Whoever would like to speak, they can. So whereas national health organizations, environmental agencies, and physical fitness activists believe increase in bicycling to be the national interest for health purposes, and whereas an increase in the use of bicycles in the place of motor vehicles will accordingly decrease greenhouse gas emissions in Lee County, and whereas Lee County has an interest in encouraging the use of bicycles, increasing education and awareness of bicycle safety, and whereas since 1998, Lee County has invested millions of dollars in constructing bicycle facilities, currently maintains approximately 614 miles of facilities, and whereas the Board of County Commissioners adopted a complete streets resolution on November 10, 2009. Now, therefore, it will be resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Lee County, Florida, hereby do proclaim May 2021 Bike Club with May 5th, 2021 as Bike to School Day, and the week of May 17th to the 21st as Bike to Work Week, and Friday the 21st as Bike to Work Day in Lee County. Duly executed on the 20th day of April by myself as the chairman. On behalf of the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, I, I appreciate the recognition. Um, I actually came with some, uh, a few, just two numbers. Um, and these are, these are accomplishments by Lee County within the year 2020. Um, the first number is the, the, the bike paths for existing roads that didn't have to be worked on. It's just, just, just bike paths. We've added 13,400 linear feet. That equates to 2.5 miles of, of bike paths. Now, for roadways that were totally rehabbed, that were resurfaced, we've added both bike facilities and uh, bike lanes to 19,180 linear feet. That equates to 3.6 miles. So we've, we've made quite an accomplishment over the, over the last year. And, and, uh, and certainly with, with, uh, with COVID, um, the, the opportunity for people to get out and about has, has increased. And we've actually heard from the citizens a, a desire for, for, for increased size in, in the facilities, which, which is a good thing. Um, and some of those interactions, some people don't necessarily like those interactions on, on the bike paths and, and, and bike ped facilities. But for me, I view that as an opportunity for social interaction. And we all need that good, positive social interaction. So uh, let's get out there and, and, and uh, enjoy the weather and enjoy our facilities. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. If you're comfortable, you, you're welcome to. We can't see that pretty smile. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate Thank it you guys. very much. Sorry, sir. Thank you very much. Next is our recap, and there are a couple of items. Um, items to be deferred and continue to C11, the approval or purchase of eight light duty vehicles. We're going to obviously defer that. And then revisions and corrections, 8-2, the consideration of two Conservation 2020 nominations in Lehigh Acres. Um, they need to be removed because obviously the tax certificate was redeemed by somebody else. I'll move approval of the request on the recap. Second. So motion to second on the floor. Any discussion at the county level? Any public comment? Seeing none, any objections? Motion carries. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, any items on the consent agenda that would like to be pulled? None. I have none. 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 I have none as well. Move the balance. Second. Motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none, any opposition? That motion carries unanimously. Chairman, if I could, I just want to mention number six. Um, there's number six is um, more paving in Lehigh Acres. I'm sure Lee County's commitment to resurfacing all the roads. I know Commissioner Mann has been really adamant about this too for over the years. And Lehigh Acres every year we keep adding more roads out there being paved, repaving. So thank you to the staff for bringing this forward. And thank you for the unanimous support, Mr. Chairman, that, uh, that y'all had done since we've increased our commitment out there. Actually, it was number 17. I'm sorry, I said the wrong number. Number 17, that was the Lehigh Acres Road. I'm going to thank you for it, no matter what you call it. Okay. 
<laughs> Happy to do so. Super. Uh, next item on the agenda is administrative agenda, and the first item is approval request for 16 new positions. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would uh, ask Mr. Uh, Sellier to, I mean, uh, Mr. Loveland to present the item. Good morning, Commissioners. Dave Loveland, Community Development, or just Loveland, if you prefer. Loveland. <laughs> it works. Thank you, Director. Um, we're here before you today to ask for your assistance. Um, the Community Development Department and the, the building permit process that we have uh, is kind of overwhelmed at this time. Uh, we've seen a, a big increase in the volume of building permit activity. Uh, we had a big spike in December that we had attributed to a change in the building code. Things dropped down a little bit in, in January, February, but in March, they really went through the roof. Um, our review times are backed up. Um, we currently have uh, over 2,600 active permits in the review process at, at this point in time. We're uh, just getting to early March submittals in terms of the reviews. And um, we've been doing as much as we can within the existing framework and budget. We've, we're filling all our vacancies. We're um, paying over time to our staff to try to deal with the, the demand. Um, we've been using outside contractors where we can, although their availability is limited because the private sector is so busy right now. Um, and we've been looking at ways that we can kind of isolate certain issues and, and try to deal with those separately and, and uh, including the, the mastering by the big builders, master the plans, if we get a master approval, then, then it's just a kind of a rubber stamp process for the submittal of the same units over and over and over again to try to take those out of the mix. Um, but given all of that and given the expected demand that we're, we're uh, hearing from the building industry for the foreseeable future, we are requesting 16 additional positions um, that would all be on the building permit side of, of community development for, for permitting, for regulatory review, for plans review, for building inspections um, to, to be funded out of the building permit fee fund reserve. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Um, certainly understand the need realistically. There's a possibility you fill in all 16 positions. Well, um, realistically, eventually we'll get there. Uh, some of the positions are harder to fill than others. The, the building inspectors and the plan reviewers require special certifications through the state. And so those, those are harder to find, harder positions to fill. Um, but we had, we've already started the advertising process and we're, we're getting a pretty decent response. Um, and so, you know, I, I think for some of the positions, the customer service representatives as a part, part of the permitting group and the regulatory review group will be able to fill those fairly quickly. It's great to see Lee County growing and, and everything that's going on. So I'm supportive of it, just trying to be realistic with, you know, I know there's some uh, backlog, I know there's just a little bit longer waiting <coughs> period, you know, so I'm trying to, um, you know, just have the conversation um, with you and certainly applaud what you're doing, being proactive, just realistically, when people hear 16 positions, we just can't snap our fingers and they appear and your backlog goes away. So I, I, I experienced it in my first hand, um, understand that the challenges of getting you know, contractors to your house just to bid a job. So understand that all, but those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dave, um, so these numbers, um, first of all, thank you and your staff, your team is Step up the last year, all Lee County employees have stepped up this year and helped with the testing facilities and the, and the um, with the shots and everything. But um, what kind of scares me is seeing these numbers, and obviously we don't have any control, but you know, you remember the numbers back in, I think it was 08, we had 45,000 permits. We, we, we saw that, we see that, remember seeing that for years, that scale in the market trends was permits like here, then the 2008 we went up to 45,000. Um, we just don't know how long this is gonna last. So thank you for bringing this forward. I'm be very supportive of this, but thank you your staff for everything for coming forward with this. And I had some of the same concerns as the chairman did. Where are we gonna find the people? Because right now in the marketplace, everybody's looking for workers right now and the workforce is really limited. Um, but um, do we see maybe even April and May even spiking higher than this? Because I see a trend here, going from 3,100 to 33, then 47. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's no way to predict that. But what I'm seeing on the real estate end, um, there's no there's no inventory for resells, so everybody's turning to new homes, and that's why we're seeing this increase. 
Right, and, and the, the, the builders are telling us that their expectation is that this trend is going to continue for, for the foreseeable future in terms of new housing construction and the demand and the demand for that. They're, they're estimating 25 to 30 percent over where they were last year in terms of activity. So. And now from what I'm hearing too is, is it might slow it down a little bit because I know they're having a hard time getting supplies right now, wood for example. So some of the builders actually stop selling because they can't get the supplies or they cannot guarantee the price based upon the cost of the, uh, the to the consumer. So it's going to be, be interesting to watch. But um, but thank you for bringing this forward. Do you have staff? You have room for these 16 new employees throughout the office? We do actually. the The way we had configured everything, we allowed for some future growth, and so we we have the space without having to do any reconfigurations at this point. Great. And all the building inspectors are out in the field. So. Okay, thank you, and thank you for your team for doing what they're doing now. And you've been asked to step up to the plate, and obviously this is something we could not predict. So thank you for being here for that. Dave, uh, also thank you again. Um, it's been interesting because uh, we, during the pandemic, we've moved to a lot of technology. But certainly the request that I've had, and I think all of us has, people like the one-on-one -on -one interface with people in the department. So they can simply ask a question and move that on. So. In, in bringing these people on board, technology is always going to be a part of us going forward, but the personal interaction between our teams, you know, and stuff like that is going to be incumbent upon as we move things forward. So, so thanks for doing that, and that's part of building the culture that we have. Thanks. You're welcome. One question. Uh, in the bad days of 07, 08, when we were laying people off because we didn't have the work or the, the permits to review or the jobs to inspect, uh, Bring me up to date from 08 to today. Are we about back to where we were before the layoffs began in terms of your workload? Just uh, curious. In terms of employee level? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the employee level was in 2008 because I wasn't part of community development at that time. I took over in. You were a road builder back then. I was an evil road builder at the time, yes. Um, so. I, I'm just. I'm I, I don't think we've quite hit w at the peak right before the, the the layoffs. DCD had staffed up tremendously because they were putting people everywhere uh, in that building. Um, so I don't think we've gotten quite back to the levels that we had at the, the previous peak. Well, let me use this little brief introduction uh, interruption here to thank the Building Industry Association uh, because when when the permits were really going down, they were very supportive of our need to reduce our manpower because we were paying people to sit around and do nothing. There was no work to be done. Uh, but they've been very cooperative in getting with us now and saying, okay, folks, we understand the need. Let's bring them back on. And just for the public's interest, uh, everybody here I think knows this, we're not writing a new check for 16 new positions out of our general revenue here it's the permit fees that are up that pay for these so this is a no cost factor here in terms of the general budget correct so yeah i think we're all very supportive here mr chairman thank you very much i i, I am very supportive of what we're doing here today i want to thank you uh mr loveland for bringing this forward to us i want to thank everybody from the the building industry who also worked with us to, to bring this proposal together. Um, just by way of setting expectations, I, I applaud you for, for calling out that DCD has not met and recognizing has not met the targeted review times for permits of all types over the last four month period. My question is what are those targets and when do you expect us to reach a period where we will be able to meet those targeted review times? The targets that we we had worked out years ago with the building industry on the residential side was um, seven days which I don't think we've ever actually met that uh, it's been more like 14 days and on the commercial side 21 days uh, so we're well beyond those time frames uh, currently um, in terms of returning to to normal processing, I, th I think we're going to be a few months out. Probably, if this if this level of activity continues through through May and June, uh, it'll and as was noted, it'll take us time to fill these vacant positions uh, to be able to fully handle that. So I, I think we're still uh, uh, at least a couple of months away from getting back to normal. We are working on some options to. Um, 
try to, to deal with the big builders and their demand because that's such a big part of, of the, the loads that we're dealing with. That's at least 25% of, of what we deal with. Um, and we, we've had some preliminary discussions with county administration about are, are there ways to incentivize some additional staff over time, additional work to try to meet the need. We've been shifting resources from other sections of DCD that don't have as, quite as much work to the permit side to try to meet the demand. So. I just want to say one thing, you know, that the, we're hopefully see a little decrease here, but if we don't, thank you for bringing us forward. This meeting. Um, the difference between, I guess, 2008 and now is these are all cash buys, most of them are. So we're not going to see the big downturn like we saw back 12 years ago, hopefully. Um, right. But again, thank you for bringing us forward and look forward to the board next time. There's a dump truck. I think that means the time's up. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll move approval of administrative item number one. Second. A motion a second on the floor any other discussion up here at the committee any public say none any objections motion carries unanimously okay thank you um, the next item was actually um, removed from the recap so the item that we would move forward to in parks and recreations approval of the interlocal agreement uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we still have um, one one purchase on item number two. Okay. I Mr. Apologize. Clemens, please come to the podium and present the item. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Clemens, County Lands. Uh, the motion that we're bringing forward today is <clears throat> to uh, seek approval to um, begin acquisition activities for parcel 279. Uh, I mean, it's 278, excuse me. Um, that is the parcel in red. The parcel that is in yellow was the one that was removed when the motion was modified. Um, and this parcel is about 13 acres and it will be helpful in putting connectivity together for the GS10 parcel, which is to the south. It shows in green on this map. And it would be to create a flowway system which will carry waters westerly along Lampsit owned properties and Lee County properties that will ultimately get to the river Coosahatchee. I move the item. Second. <clears throat> I have a motion and a second on the floor. So, Any? real quick, if I may ask a question, um, can we can just explain a little bit about uh, again how it's an it's an important connection to GS10 because typically we wouldn't buy a standalone preserve that's this small, right? Correct. We're, we're working to connect some parcels so that we will have this connectivity through this area. There's a gap of looks like about a quarter of a mile between what is some of the lamps that own properties mm -hmm. that are to the northwest of GS10. So at some point we're going to have to use their network of canals to create that connectivity and acquire a couple of properties along the way. This looks like the most natural course and shortest distance to accomplish that connection. Okay, yeah, thank you. Any other questions? A motion and a second, no discussion here. Any public comments? Seeing none, any objections? Motion carries unanimously. Now we'll move on to the next yeah, item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, administrative item number three is asking you to approve an interlocal agreement with um, Lampsid for the Abel Canal project. Um, Mr. Lavender, will you present the item, please? Good morning, Commissioners. Um, exactly what Roger said. This is a uh, agreement for management of along the Abel Canal. Uh, if you will recall, in fiscal year 23-24, um, we've secured funding from FDOT as well as our own funding for a six mile linear greenway along the north side of Abel Canal that will go from Harns Marsh all the way to Lehigh Acres Trailhead Park and we'll have connectivity to Lehigh Acres Park um, and school and several of those roads uh, going through there but this is a real significant upgrade to the canal system as well as uh, for public enjoyment in Lehigh Acres. And I'm here for any questions you might have. Good luck. What, what parking opportunities are at either end or, or along the way? 
So primarily the parking opportunities are at the start, the middle, and the end. That would be Harns Marsh, uh, Lee Acres Community Park, and Lee Acres Trailhead Park. So kind of at the start, the middle, and the end. Sure, thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is in my district, and uh, we've been working on this five or six years. It's been a long time coming together, uh, but this is kind of the final st uh, step of uh, the how it's going to be managed and the role that uh, LAMS is going to play alongside of us. So it's a good, it's a good project and uh, it's great for Lehigh and I appreciate the support all along of the commission to get us to this point. So I'd be happy to move this. I'll second it. Second from Commissioner Hammond. <coughs> Any discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none. Any objections? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you guys. No problem. Pleasure. Next item would be um, on the utilities and execute the MOU between Captiva Panel and the City of Sanibel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Brady, please present the item. Good morning, Commissioners. Today we are presenting the follow-up item from your April 6th agenda meeting. At this meeting, you approved a grant to the Captiva Community pa Planning Panel. This item is a memorandum of understanding between the county, the Captiva Community Planning Panel, and the City of Sanibel. This agreement has been executed by all other parties. This agreement codifies the relationship by all parties as it pertains to this grant. And we remain available for questions. I appreciate it. I'm gonna hand the gavel over to uh, Vice Chair. I'll certainly make the motion to approve this item. I'll second it. Motion to second on the floor, any discussion? I appreciate all the hard work we got to the finish line in this and thank you very much. Um, any public comment? See none any objections. Hey, you can't call for public comment. He's the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, sorry. You're doing good. I wasn't going to stop. <laughs> yeah. Any public comment on this item? See none. Any, any, any objections? No objections. Motion passes. Thank you. You want it back? Well done, Mr. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a little excited there. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Next item is our public hearings. Uh, we'll go to the first item. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, David Halverson with the county attorney's office. I have your first public hearing this morning. I'm providing, I'm providing the affidavit of publication to the clerk. This is a petition to vacate the public's interest in an unimproved public utility easement lying in lot four of the platted lot located at 6523 Furman Boulevard in Fort Myers. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I have no questions. I have no questions. I'll move approval. The motion, I'll second it. Motion to second on the floor. Any other discussions, commissioners? Seeing none, any public comment? Seeing none, any opposition? Motion carries unanimously, thank you. Thank you. Item number two. Good morning, Commissioners. Amanda Swindle with the Lee County Attorney's Office. I have your second public hearing this morning, and it has been duly advertised. This hearing is to adopt an ordinance amending our existing ordinance regulating the use of county rights of way. The proposed ordinance would include two important new safety related provisions. The first provision would prohibit any physical interaction between a pedestrian and an occupant of a motor vehicle if that motor vehicle is on an arterial or collector road with an unincorporated Lee County and is not legally parked. The second prohibition would um, be on pedestrians standing, stopping, or otherwise occupying a median that does not constitute a sufficient pedestrian refuge. The Florida Department of Trans Transportation Median Handbook defines a pedestrian refuge as being at least six feet in width, and that's measured from the inside of the curb to the inside of the curb. Um, this propo proposed ordinance would also eliminate the permit system for charitable solicitation drives within the right-of-way. Those type of solicitations would now be prohibited. And finally, the ordinance provides for enforcement by the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Uh, violations of this ordinance would constitute a misdemeanor punishable by a fine not to exceed $500 and or imprisonment in the county jail for a period not to exceed 60 days. The ordinance would take effect upon filing with the Secretary of State, which should happen in the next couple of days if this ordinance is approved. Staff is available to answer any questions you have on this ordinance. Questions? Okay. Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what I'd like for us to do is put on the record, and uh, Mr. Sawyer, you, you may be the one or uh, yield to the county manager uh, to, to, for who wants to answer this. We have recently adopted a number of measures dealing with the homeless and the folks that this is probably going to impact. Uh, and we have uh, partnered with Salvation Army and others uh, to make available programs that were not previously funded at this level. And I'd just like for us to review that so that uh, we don't seem like five bad guys up here that have no care or sensitivity to the folks that this mo most likely will impact. Uh, Mr. Chair? Uh Richard, you want to help with this one? We can certainly address the, the issue of the county stepping up um, probably over the last six months, if not more, uh, with regard to our efforts to combat homelessness here in Lee County and the impacts thereof. I think it's important and I want to drive the point home that this ordinance is for the safety and protection of our rights of way. While admittedly, a class of individuals will be impacted. The purpose behind the ordinance is to keep all people safe regardless of the classification from which they originate. And by that I mean this is a public safety ordinance. It applies across the board to all people without regard where they hail from. This is to prohibit interactions in our rights of way that could lead to either injury and or death. So, Mr. Chair, and then to answer Commissioner's question directly, um, Mark, yeah, that please. did not answer it. I understand that, and this is for safety purposes, and that's all been yes, on sir. record. But very important preamble to to the to the rest of the conversation. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Commissioners. Just uh, one quick thing I'd like to point out, not all panhandlers are homeless. You know, research will show you that there's a good portion that are, but uh, there are some that are not. Now, in regards to the resources that the county at the commissioner's direction have provided the community, uh, I'd like to point out one, the Homeless Day Resource Center that we have in partnership with the Salvation Army has been extremely successful, seeing over 100 individuals each day. They're open Monday through uh, Saturday. Uh, and I think they're adjusting their hours because they're seeing that there's a lot of clients showing up early in the morning. But I'll remind you that that program that we help support there not only bl uh, brings basic needs to them, they have uh, opportunities for showers, for um, assistance with job searches, there's wraparound services with counselors. We now have a person for coordinated entry right from our human services working out of that building as well. So we built a good relationship with the Salvation Army and the services there have been extremely successful. So if there are panhandlers who are seeking out assistance with food, uh, shelter, that would be where we'd like to direct them. So resources are available there. I'd also say that um, the, the commissioners here have also voted to use some of our monies from the CARES Act for food security programs. And we've, um, we've allocated several dollars, millions of dollars, I would say, to several nonprofits who are offering food <coughs> through their food banks, through other distribution points, so there's been plenty of resources put out for folks that might be in need of the basic needs. Could you, uh, you said, Mr. Chairman, if I may just continue for a second, because that's exactly the answer I was wanting to have on the record. But you said uh, several million, two, three, or can you quantify that a little more specifically? Glenn might be able to help me out here as far as- That we're doing now more than we did a year ago this time. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Mann, in terms of food security, this board has provided more than $5 million in direct assistance to food banks, plus also food pantry assistance as well. That's the number I'm looking for. Thank yeah, you. I, I had the privilege of certainly spending some time with Mark over the last couple of weeks, and um, 
you know, I know the resource center we all went to, the Salvation Army, they have capacity. Obviously, they're nowhere near capacity as far as being able to feed people. So there's <coughs> obviously opportunities there to continue to have more people fed. Um, I think it's admirable. Um, you gentlemen, certainly before I got here, started to give direct money to uh, facilities that were obviously providing food. I also had the privilege <coughs> of going over to the Bob James Triage Center. And, you know, to my surprise, that wasn't full either. So I hear the need, but you know, there's a, a facility to go get a shower, go get some food. Um, there's another place where you can actually start to transition. Um, there's rules and regulations, but we have openings in both and pretty abundant openings when I look at the numbers associated with it. So um, I'm also fearful, and if I, if I may, someone from the county uh, attorney's office, you know, it, it is about public safety, and I know there's been some incidences that I think are important to share with the community because, you know, again, you sit here as a com county commission and, you know, as Commissioner Matt said, it might be perceived that we're looking at something. But, you know, when you sit up here, our first responsibility is about public safety. You know, I look myself in the mirror and, and having served now for almost 15 years, that's first and foremost. So when you put someone in harm's way and you have some incidences, and I think it's important for the audience to understand the incidents that we've had, um, that obviously you know, was a factor in the decision we need to make um, because we do have a responsibility to keep people safe. So maybe you could expand upon that. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just point out that <coughs> incredibly, um, and, and not all the statistics I'm going to cite are, are specific to intersection interfaces, but um, according to the National Highway Safety Traffic Administration, regrettably Lee County identifies as the 11th most dangerous place for pedestrians in our country. Not a statistic that, that we want to perpetuate and this ordinance should help to alleviate that. In 2020 alone, 22 pedestrians were killed in crashes with motor vehicles within Lee County. And again, this ordinance is meant to accommodate that. Um, we have queued up if the board would be interested NBC2 actually did a, a story about this ordinance and uh, interviewed one of the individuals impacted who freely admits that he has been hit no less than three times in our intersections while conducting this type of activity. Uh, so this is a public safety ordinance and, and that is the, the sole basis for why we're bringing this forward. If, with your indulgence, we'd like to play. It's a relatively short clip, really like I think would be that. instructive. Thank you. New rules for panhandling pedestrians in Lee County. You've almost surely seen people asking for money like this on the side of the road, especially lately. Well, in a vote today, Lee County commissioners unanimously passed an ordinance that would prohibit people from standing in a median. The county says they're not targeting panhandlers, but people on the street disagree. NBC2's Gage Golding is live for us tonight at Daniels Parkway and US 41, one of the busiest intersections in Lee County. Yeah, good evening. The ordinance hasn't been signed into law yet. Actually, it has quite a way to go, but people that would be potentially affected by its implications, especially panhandlers, are beginning to worry now. Nathan Webb doesn't have a job, a home, or a traditional source of income. Instead, he spends his days on the median, like this one at the intersection of Six Mile Cypress and Daniels Parkway. Right now, I'm unemployed, and uh, this helps me out a lot. The county says it doesn't want to stop people like him because he's a panhandler, but instead, for another reason, their safety. I've been hit three times. And I was hit on a sidewalk where people are just coming out of a McDonald's or something, and they just plowed right into me. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says fatal pedestrian accidents in Lee <coughs> County are up 150%, the 11th deadliest area for pedestrians in the nation. That's why some see this move as a step in the right and safer direction. This is one of those items that we talked about historically for a year. This will help fix that issue. Others. I'm very concerned that this ordinance will be attacking panhandlers and a criminal justice response to somebody that's you know, food insecure, housing insecure potentially, is just, it's, it's a cruel and counterproductive strategy. While the ordinance isn't official yet, if it does become law, people like Nathan will have a bigger question to answer. Where would you go to get money? I don't know, maybe on the sidewalk or I don't know. Lee 
County Board of Commissioners unanimously giving the ordinance a green light this morning, but people at home have the chance to give their two cents at a public hearing on April 20th. If approved then, the ordinance would supersede any prior laws and could become effective by the end of this month. We're live in Lee County this evening. Gage Golding, NBC2. Um, Mr. Chair, the commissioners uh, further to that report, um, I know we've spoken internally about this, uh, this safety issue and um, it has been pretty common recently uh, to see someone in the intersection uh, in the median uh, holding a young child in their arms or having a dog on a leash uh, in, 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 in and out of that traffic. And it's not, it, it is a combination of things. It's the safety of the person who, who might be in the intersection, but also the drivers. Drivers get distracted by, you know, somebody who's trying to flag them down, trying to, you know, get them to donate money. And the next thing you know, we got rear end collisions. And so it's, you know, it affects a lot of people. And uh, to, to see someone standing in an intersection with a young child, I mean, that's terrifying. Okay. Um, it was interesting today that we started our meeting today with bicycle safety. You know, and I think uh, we're encouraging more people to ride. I try to ride, you know, a few times a week. Um, when we get into the design of our new roads or multi uh, path, you know, for cars, for pedestrians, whatever. So this is not one issue. These are all linked together, you know, for pedestrian safety, for bicycle safety, and for vehicle safety. And um, it, it's a part of a, an overall plan, which I think is responsible for the safety of everybody. If I could, I was saying um, thank you to Amanda and the county attorney's office for bringing forward as administration staff work together with this. You know, as we sit here and talk about this, as Commissioner Sindeli says about safety, um, seven hours ago, a gentleman was killed on Hanson Street while crossing Hanson Street, seven hours ago. And I think the county is recognized as a problem, as the county attorney said, we're 11th in the nation. So I think it's good government to do this. We have resources for people. There's no reason for somebody to stand in the middle of the road with not provided for pedestrian safety. They can stand on the sidewalk, they can stand on the bicycle path. Just not in the middle of the road. If you've never stood in the middle of an intersection, I've done it before, at Cleveland and Colonial or Fowler and Colonial or Daniels Parkway, in direct traffic, you'll see people do not pay attention. It is unsafe for somebody to stand in the middle of the road on, a un, on an unpaved surface or a unlevel surface. Most of these medians are usually pitched about 10 degrees, so it's for water runoff, so it's not safe. I've actually witnessed one of the gentlemen at college in 41 actually fall on the median into the lane of traffic. Thank goodness no one was there. But when that happens, it's unsafe. And as, like I said, seven hours ago, somebody just died here in our roads in Lee County. And I think we have to do this. We have to provide safety for the residents. And, and as we started, or the, started the meeting with, with the BPAC, we put so much money and so much energy into making it safe. And this is another link to that. So thank you for bringing that, Commissioner Sindeli. Any other? I'll um, move the item. Yeah, I'll second his motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll tell you, it's, um, it's hard enough to drive these days. There are so many distractions on the roads for drivers with all the new technology that we've got in our cars and everything going on in our lives. And uh, this will hopefully help even remove one more distraction from, from drivers because, uh, you know, it, 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 is, uh, it is moving fast out there. This is a lot bigger county than when Commissioner Pendergrass and I grew up here. And there's a lot more cars on the road now. And so um, safety is really the big priority here. And, and I do think that the, the video showed it all when you look at a, a person trying to balance on a, a very slope, uh, very small median, man, one wrong step and you're in traffic and then that's a bad day for everybody. And so I think we really need to take this very responsible step to promote sta safety. I have a motion a second, but I'll go to public comment now. I have three cords. Um, Kat is the first cord I have. Commissioners, I urge you to reject this proposed ordinance. You say that this law isn't targeting panhandlers, but they are already being targeted. From Oct October 2019 to October 2020, over 100 people in Lee County asking for help were arrested or cited for violating anti-panhandling ordinances. Their, spe their speech was actually protected by the First Amendment, and the county cannot single out panhandling for differential treatment. These laws are used <clears throat> to criminalize poverty and homelessness, and a criminal justice response to this issue is cruel and counterproductive 
especially during the COVID-19 pandemic where putting people in jail just contributes to the spread of the disease. Lee County should focus more on more constructive solutions like affordable housing and accessing FEMA funds to provide those in housing crisis with non-congregate temporary housing in hotels for the duration of the COVID-19 pandemic. Furthermore, implementing this ordinance will open you up to lawsuit as is happening in Fort Lauderdale and Pompano Beach. Panhandling ordinances have been found unconstitutional under recent United States Supreme Court precedent. Commissioners, there are better ways to ensure the safety of our pedestrians. Don't jail people for asking for help. Help them. Thank you. Gracie? Sir, Gracie? Okay. Um, any other? Come on up, man. We'll, we'll, come on up. Good morning. My name is Jasmine Miller, JV. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. I agree you should not stand in the median and because it's dangerous. But as far as panhandling goes, we all need to get together and sit down and talk about it. And we all have to envision being homeless. Have you walked in the shoes of a homeless person? Have you go to bed at night and you're homeless and in the morning you have no money to eat? Because Social Security denied your money for four years? Have you ever been in those situations? Let's talk about it now. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. The Salvation Army engaged in panhandling. They have a license, yes they do. Goodwill does, they have licenses. Let us talk and give these people a license to find under somewhere where they won't be run over by traffic. And let me tell you something else. Let's go to 41. You better put a police officer there and standing right at the bridge when those people fly over and, tr and kill us when we're on the sidewalk. That's public safety. You want to talk about public safety? Council? Let's talk about public safety. It's not the panhandlers that's causing accidents. It's the, the way the road is set up here. You are giving people a license to speed in this place. Let's call in the, the state troopers to do their job since the police ain't doing it. That's the issue right now, not the panhandlers. Give them a license, a panhandler, and put them in a safe place, a panhandler. He ain't gonna go away. Let's fix the problem responsible. Thank you very much. Emmy, you want to come up and talk? You need, to put your, you need to put your name on the mic and tell us who you are. Oh, Tanya. My name is Tanya Davis. I'm, I'm not homeless, but I, I had, two years ago, I wouldn't have cared. Okay. But I met a couple, and I talked to them. And I talked to you guys. I would write in with suggestions, and one of you did it. You went amongst them, and you walked and you started doing a couple things that I asked you to do, which is you looked around and you went amongst them in the showers and you did a couple of the things I suggested to and I'm really glad that you did it and I started seeing really good results and I'm really proud of you guys for that I really think you really have seen done really wonders um, but amongst the panhandlers this is what I'm seeing you see, you take hope away from them and they get really down and they get really sad. And, and I only have a small group that I talk to. They're, they're one autistic young man who, if you give him hope, he really gets good. And one man who was working but can't anymore because his eyes are too bad and he has tried. And one gentleman who has dementia in other words, if he talks, he talks in circles. You know, you know what I'm saying if you have a family member who has it. And they do panhandle. And I do tell them to stop, but they keep doing it because it's the only way they eat. And from what I noticed of them, they only get enough to eat. And then they go sit on the spot. And I asked them the other day, I brought them a chicken from Publix. 
And the one said, no, I'll go. I had just enough to eat and money enough to get money for food. You give it to the other two. They will always tell you Bible verses. They will always give you, you hope. I don't need hope. I have a house. I'm always trying to give them Bibles, trying to give them verses. They are not... Um, Bums, they were people like you. They had homes. One was a trucker. He had a life until his wife died. And then, you know, I don't know the story of the other one. They just, they had families. These people that you see, they had families. And then, whatever reason, it got taken away from them. And this is a story that I've seen in these boys. And the autistic young man, his family steals from him. And yes, I call children and families. I appreciate your comments. Okay, but I'm gonna keep it to this. As far as the panhandlers, take the loitering away. You know, when you loiter in the Publix or loiter, you know, a standing where you're not supposed to take that away. Thank you. Because if you, I don't like it when they're in the median, but if they can stand in that spot, maybe that might do. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing good. Thank you. But that's what I see. Next public comment. Anyone else would like to speak on this item? Sure. Chairman, I may have to amend my motion. I saw something a second ago. I'm not sure if we want to answer <coughs> or not. But so this is this was on the corporate areas of the county, and actually I was approached by one of the council members from our beach a while back because um, they have issues down there, like in Times Square. People like to congregate and stand there looking for cement median that's not made for pedestrian use, and people with diabetes are out. They usually just let them stand in the pathway there. Um, could we also could this motion also include having either the county attorney's office, county manager, to contact all the cities? Because I know, like the city of Union Springs, they contract with the sheriff's department. The village of Astero is within Lee County, but they don't have their own law enforcement jurisdiction. LCSO does that. So to, to have either the county attorney's office or the county manager I'll send a letter to each city, instructing them that they would have to adopt the same ordinance too for their areas, for their for their um, locations. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We would be happy to do that. As you point out, and as Ms. Swindoll pointed out, this is effective if adopted within the unincorporated areas of Lee County. Each separate municipality would have the option to either opt into this ordinance or in all likelihood adopt their own ordinance uh, dealing with this subject matter. But yes, we would be happy to send that letter. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just have a, an additional moment um, just to respond. Uh, Nowhere in this ordinance will you find the word peddler, peddling, or anything along those lines. This is a valid time, place, manner restriction, which the law very well recognizes. This is a right-of-way protection ordinance solely for the purpose of trying to either eliminate or limit uh, personal injury and or death by virtue of pedestrian vehicle interactions in our rights of way. We do not touch pedaling anywhere else in Lee County. That is not the subject of this ordinance. And given this county's steps as outlined by administrative staff earlier in this meeting to address the needs of the homeless, I find it somewhat disingenuous to have somebody come to the podium and allege that this is anything else but what it is, which is a right of way safety ordinance. And should it be challenged, we stand ready to defend it. It was drafted in such a manner so that a reviewing court would find it as a valid time, place, manner restriction and not an abridgment to free speech. <clears throat> that is the reason why we advocated removing any exemption criteria from the ordinance so that all parties are treated equally under the law. Thank you. And like I was saying before, the beach situation, that's not really, that's for pedestrians is crossing the road too many people, or even had people out there trying to sell sell beach balls or something out there at one time. Um, so that would give them the authority to the agency to respond. But that the, the city, the town of Florence Beach, would have to be included. So hopefully the cities will pick this ordinance up and adopt it. Thank you. 
I, I obviously close public comment, but I'll take your comment since I asked before and you said you didn't want to, but come on up. State your name for the record, that would be great. My name is Harmony Hicks, and I would like to sit, speak on the behalf of the panhandling happening in my area, just over the bridge. Um, in my camp, there are three couples, including me and my husband. Um, most of the time, when anyone from my camp goes to panhandle, it's for stuff like tampons, medicine, stuff like that. We don't panhandle to, to, to you know, we panhandle for our health. And me personally, I don't panhandle. I, I won't because honestly, when I go out there, I wait for the crosswalk. I wait for it to tell me to walk. And still people pull out and try to hit me. So that's why I don't panhandle anymore. But when somebody from my camp goes to panhandle, it's for beneficial things to help us get by. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, I don't do this publicly often, but um, KD, I walked in your shoes. Um, we certainly had an incident where our home was foreclosed on. I was on welfare. I was on food stamps. I was on cheese lines. I walked in your shoes. I understand it. But I'm also trying to recognize what this county has done to feed people. You know, when I go over to a center like the Salvation Army where we have the capacity to give maybe 175 meals, we're only doing 100. I'm questioning why. Um, many times I've offered people that are on the sidewalk food, not money, food. More times than not, it's denied. So again, I appreciate your concerns. I appreciate the issues. But this isn't putting anyone in jail. This is trying to protect people so I don't have someone being hit. Also look at the Bob James Triage Center. You know, someone gave me a hand up, okay? Gave me an opportunity to reestablish myself. And that's what the Bob James Triage Center and many organizations. I came from Sanibel, we had situations just like that. We have community housing there. So we are trying to help people as much as possible. But the first thing we will always do is make sure we put safety first. And this is a safety, this affects all people. I mean, people forget the fact that, you know, there are many organizations, firemen, policemen that are on that right away as well. So we're not labeling one particular group. Everybody gets affected by this. So I just wanted to make those comments on the record. So when you say we haven't walked, I've walked in your shoes. Ma'am, I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like. Um, it's not something I certainly have. People that know me personally know my story. Um, so I have empathy and sympathy, but I'm also going to protect my citizens here. With that in mind, any other discussion? I have a motion and a second on the floor. We gave you an opportunity to speak, ma'am. We do it once. Ma'am, 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 you can't, thank you. I have a motion a second on the floor. Any other discussion? Any objections? Motion carries unanimously. Any, there's no walk on or carry over items. Commissioner items. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Appointments when we get. No, I have this appointments later. Yeah. Any commissioner items? Let's start with appointments, Commissioner Ma'am. I have one, Mr. Chairman, to the Community Action Agency, Katie Bradford. Second. Thank you. Motion second on the floor. Any discussion? Any public comment? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a reappointment of Christina Mumford to the Alabama Grove Area Lighting Unit and Michael Eckblad to the Roadway Landscape Committee. Second. Thank you. A motion second on the floor. Any discussion? Any public comment? Any objection? Motion carries. I have two. I have a reappointment of Cindy Roberts to the Tanglewood Improvement Unit and a new appointment of, for Tony Planas of Hispanic Affairs. I'll second it. Motion to second. Any discussion? Any public comment? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I've got uh, two reappointments uh, Walter and Aretha Marion, uh, both to the Harlem Heights Street Lighting Unit. I'll second that. Motion to second on the floor. Any discussion? 
Any public comment? Any opposition? Motion carries. Um, I did have uh, someone that uh, was approached to me. I'd like to interview the person first. Um, so I'm going to carry that over to the next meeting. Um, I just don't know the person at all. And um, I just think it's a policy to make sure I appoint who I at least had a conversation with. County manager items. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have nothing for you today. County attorney items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next extension of the state of local emergency regarding the county's COVID response. We respectfully request approval. Is the uh, state of Florida still under a state of emergency? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, then I'll move forward your item. Thank you, sir. Motion and second on the floor. Any discussion? Any public comment? Any objections? Motion carries. Now going to public presentations, public comment. Um, I have cords that people have done. Jasmine, you spoke already? You want to speak again? Come on up, man. Good morning again, Jasmine Miller, JD. Um, I want to bring to light certain things that I've been looking at in the county regarding the housing of the homeless. Thank you for um, uh, relocating the people from Lions Park. Um, some of them uh, fell um, through the cracks, so to speak, and we need to find them and um, house them immediately. They're on the streets, and the only people who know of these people are the homeless advocates. Um, so myself and Willie Joe and Robert and others, we have called ourselves outreach, homeless outreach workers, which means we are homeless people and we know more about the, um, the landscaping. So I'm asking the county, um, uh, Mr. County Manager, I'm asking you to reach out to us. We are the only one who's going to help you because, you know, it's very hard for you to do it alone. Now, um, things that I need to bring to light, the people have been uh, evicted from the library. You know we used to sleep at the library. That was our camp during the COVID. CDC guidelines said you're not supposed to break up our camps without housing us. So we continue to be on the streets with the cops or the police officers come and run us off at night, 2.30 in the morning, flashing their flashlights in our face, running off the homeless woman into the woods to be raped. Okay, I want that to stop immediately. Now I would like for you to send a case worker stationed at the library starting today to help the homeless people. A lot of homeless people are coming in from different states. For example, we have quite a few people that run away from Texas. They're here sleeping on the street. Some of them are breaking down. They're losing it. I am sick of it. Um, I know you don't have enough people to help us, so you need to attend to this immediately. Um, please send a caseworker immediately to the library to look for the people there and house them immediately. You have our money to put them in hotels and then you can transition them into places. And I must do um, a shout out to Miss Chloe who works with um, St. Saint, Saint, um, Vincent de Paul. She's my case manager. She found me a place, hopefully it'll work out. She's a very good lady, very gracious lady. And she's competent and she knows what she's doing. So you did one good thing, hiring somebody who who, who, who's good. Thank you, Mr. Um, Roger Mercado and your office. Um, I know it's not your problem. I'm going to go straight to HUD and I'm going to start asking HUD for money because I know what needs to be done in, this, in, in the community. Now, last thing, when you go into the woods and you, um, I'm going to address this to Mr. Brian Hammond, when you go into the woods and you find a homeless camp, don't break them up. Please find a way to engage in dialogue with HUD and ask for money and buy the camp, buy the piece of land and leave them there. They're families, you're breaking up families. Homeless people, they suffer sometimes from things. I, I, a lot of stuff, the, the family kick them out, death, uh, they wanna stay there in their camp, stay in there, keep them there, thank you. Good luck with your, uh, your new place too, Jasmine. Gracie. Harmony.
name's Gracie Lash, and um, I've been homeless for the past, like, about a year because I've been going in and out, like, when, um, when I first became homeless, it's right after I lost my mom. Yeah, yeah. And, um, 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 my, uh, my dad wouldn't take me in and stuff, and I was, uh, he found out I stole money from both of them and everything, and, um, and... Why you stole money from both of them? Why? Yeah, I get, like, my, like, some stuff for me, like, personal stuff and all that, and, and then a little after that, I met a guy, um, his name is Christopher McLean, and we started um, dating and stuff, and we got to spend time together, and we did a lot of stuff, but he had me involved in shoplifting at Walmart, getting a knife and stuff, and he also, like, when we were right behind uh, the Lee County Rec Center by the library, we, uh, he had me stay there, and he went to rob our family restaurant, and then Thursday night, he had me waiting behind the Publix right on Hancock and Orange Grove Boulevard, and that's the night he got he got caught. And after that, and how do you feel about that? I feel pretty upset about that. And then after that, Dustin, Todd Dustin Anderson came in my life, and I wanted to be with him. And then just on the second of this month. He got arrested for a warrant for um, robbing um, Big Lots for batteries. And we all, I, I was involved, he had me involved, and I was hiding them. I had a purse, and I was hiding them under my shirt. And then after he got arrested, Tara and her husband, Jason, which is the one that uh, beat me up for like a few yes, days I'll ago. I'll definitely be speaking on that on my turn. And, um, and, uh, they took me in, took really good care of me, and then after that, I got with this guy named Tim, and he's really nice, and he's been with me for the past few days, and I just been wanting to have the right guy in my life, and that's about it, and then Tanya Johnson took me back, I was trying to get are you, thank are, you, for are you okay? Are they forcing you to say these? No, things? no, no. Okay? It's just um, she doesn't like public speaking, so she asked me to come up, up with her. Just seems very, you know, strange how you're forcing her to like. I'm not forcing okay. her at all. I told her that she thinks. Hard to hear with the mask on like too. An so, and our only I heard was somebody got arrested at Big Lot. So thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Willie Joe shot Marla. Are you? Yeah, I'm speaking as well. She just needed a friend up here with her. Um, at my camp, there are three couples. There's Gracie and Tim, me and my husband, Jose, and uh, a woman named Jess and Joe. The men over there tend to be very abusive. Um, she's saying that Tim is a good guy. I don't really know. My husband's a good guy. We're really just trying to get a place to where we can take refuge until a couple of us can get jobs. I just got a job. Um, I started working Saturday. So, but the, the, the pay is bi-weekly and they just got paid. So we're trying to get transportation and housing mainly. Um, I'm 19. I graduated high school June of 2020 with like a 3.8 GPA. I, I wanna go to college. You know, it's, I have big dreams. I just don't have any way to achieve them at the moment. We're just looking for resources, housing, transportation. Um, I've never had a license or a car because I haven't had the opportunity to have enough money available to, to get a driver's license or a car. Um, we're, we're just trying, we're just over here trying to get by. Um, Jess wanted to come this morning as well, but she does not feel good. We're out here, we're not really getting help. So, 
We're just here trying to see what type of help we can get. If I may, Mr. Chairman, not to interrupt, but we've, we've got our, our county assistant county manager here who's over human services, uh, Roger Mercado, I think, is still here with us. Yeah, so if, if we can make sure we meet with these folks to get them the help that they're looking for. Yes, and I can get my other friend Jess on the phone. She currently has charge on her phone, I think. I was just texting her. And she said, you know, our, our us girls, our main concern is, is safety. We don't really feel safe over there. Um, like she said, Tara and Jason, Tara left because Jason almost killed her a couple of times. Um, he's not welcome at my camp, and he's very well aware of that, but he still comes around if she's there. And you know what? She comes over to my camp to take refuge, and when he comes there, we have to send all the boys out to get rid of him. You know, Jose and Joe and Rico, they all have to go out there. And yes, I have another friend. There's Rico, and her name's a little bit. I, they, they must have went somewhere this morning, but um, a little bit did want to come as well. Thank you for your comments. We certainly will meet with you after the meeting. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very, very much. much. I'm going to get this one. Willie Joe, sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Come on up. We, uh, we need, besides the uh, most, the hotel rooms, uh, Roger, I, I uh, got your text and I let you know that I did. Uh, we need to be working on getting places, rehab them built, like with Lois and the Habitat for Humanity. So you transition, so money is appropriately used. So 50 years from now, we're, you have, you've you got people coming up here saying, well, we, we don't have things in place. We need affordable housing. I'm willing to build, and it's the lady that was talking about Alzheimer's. I have to keep busy because I have post-traumatic stress, I have a seizure disorder, I volunteer in the food bank to make a little better world. I have a daughter in another country that I wasn't able to raise because of anger towards America and that. I will die fighting, and I don't want to die on the streets. I want to see results. I want to see places in place that uh, there's been an end revenue we need, you know, because we're not going to all get it from, you know, uh, the government all the time. We'll get it from private sector. We'll get it from businesses that we have that bring in. Uh, we've got an old bus station that could be utilized as an added resource. Uh, uh, but also, the restaurant could be making money. You could have a, a restaurant in it that uh, serves ethnic food. You could have an open mic uh, coffee shop that... Uh, as entertainment, to bring in revenue to aid in the building of rehabbing places and a lot of things. So uh, I'll be uh, talking to Roger about uh, things, but uh, just uh, spending uh, money on a hotel, no. We need to transition <coughs> them from the motel so it's they're getting out of the motel into something that's, that, that's permanent. You know, the $500 a month the lowest proposed, you know, county utilities, not the nine or so that some people are in the rapid rehousing. They can't afford it, so let's all work together. God bless. Thank you. Well, I think we're wearing the tie today. Hmm? We had a tie on. Drew? Roger? <coughs> I'm Drew Broderick. Okay, the end game solution to the affordable housing crisis should be to involve the private sector and the free market to bring the solutions and bring as many people as possible out of the taxpayer funded program. My model solution does just that at the most cost effective way possible. It's been over 10 years now, not you or anybody else has come up with a better way than mine because there is no other way to accomplish this period. Yet every single one of you up there reject my long-term cost-effective, sustainable solution that does not cost one single dime of taxpayers' money and takes thousands of people out of taxpayer programs in poverty and lowers the cost of living by over 400%. Yet you continue to spend millions of taxpayers' dollars on band-aids with no end game solution 
He refused to give us taxpayers an explanation as to why. And I cannot wrap my head around the mentality that would reject this. So I'm counting on the media <clears throat> to do their due diligence to put the sunshine on this and expose to the public the facts about this issue. And I plan to tell everyone who will listen. Fort Myers is a city of first, world changing ideas and innovations since way back in the days of Edison, Ford and Firestone. And that spirit is still here today. So let's be leaders and not followers with this opportunity to put Fort Myers back on the map and change the world. So if any one of you up there are serious and really want to and care about the affordable housing crisis, poverty, homelessness and welfare in our community, then please, please, please meet with me because I have the long term sustainable solution that does not cost taxpayers one single dime. Anyone like to have a meeting? Please for comments. Nobody wants to have a meeting. Do they really care? Are they really serious about fixing the problem? Thank you for your comments. I have the solution. No. Any other public comments? Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I spoke with that gentleman after the last meeting. I talked to him about how to actually get developments and zoning changes that he's looking for. And um, I'm sad. He doesn't listen. He didn't listen to any advice I gave him. So, I, you know, I, you had your turn to speak. I'm taking mine. Thanks, Drew. Seeing no other public comment, I'll call for an adjournment. Thank you very much. Thank you.